And hello! Welcome back. It's Genshin Impact time. Last time we had the whole event with uh, Academia Extravaganza. Where the heck is Sumeru City? I think that's it over there. I'm a ways off, aren't I? Okay, am I right? Is that Sumeru City? Kind of looks like it. Uh, but anyway... What we're going to be doing today, I'll explain as we make our way over to verify whether or not this is Samara City or not. Yeah, it's Samara City. Ooh, and there's ore here. Should I? Should I? Wait, what is this barrel? An electro charge? How come I don't remember seeing those before? Well, regardless... What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be going on to the next quest that is available based on, well, basically, we started a quest when we were starting the Academia Extravaganza. We just kind of triggered it. So, I think it would do us a much good, I don't know a better way to say it, to go ahead and continue on with that. So, with that quest is is the inversion of Genesis, the night bird falls at the curtain's call. In order to look for more information about your sibling, you and Paimon decide to visit Nahida in the sanctuary of Sarastana once more. Along the way, you hear people discussing something. And what they were discussing was, I think it was a folklore of Inazuma. So I'm not completely sure what they were going for. Talk to the scholars by the road. But we're about to find out more about it by talking to the scholars on the road. Basically, we teleported here on episode 116, and we got thrown straight into a cutscene. And I had to wait until the cutscene was done in order to continue on. But we had to actually get it out of the way because it was blocking stalls that we had to get to for the extravaganza. All right, I guess I'll go with my textual criticism and your editorial direction for the first draft. I have a feeling that the missing Kabuki Mono will end up being the main focus of this paper. It's not restarting, is it? I don't think it is. Ugh, if only we knew where to find that traveler. No, From what this is a new part. About him, this seems like the kind of thing he'd know about. Looking for me? If you're looking for the traveler... That's me. Oh, you're the traveler, you say? You skeptical? Mm. He seems very skeptical. Hey, what's with that face? Don't believe us? You don't believe me. I'll go. No, no. Of course I believe you. Actually, I first heard about your great exploits when I was still in Inazuma. This is my first time coming face to face with you and your mysterious silver-haired companion. I couldn't believe my luck, and out of force of habit, I started, uh, examining the evidence. So oh, his name, Sawada. Uh, Sawada, for the love of... <laughs> Sawada, is that what it said? Much, so our social skills are kind of lacking. Uh, Traveler, I hear you've helped many people a great deal and been to many places. Would you be able to tell us about Tatarasuna? Actually, we don't know much about that place either. In fact, we only came over here because we heard you talking about it and wanted to learn more. Ah, uh, I see. Sorry, I can't help this time. My teacher chose this area of research as a personal challenge. He said it's difficult to get into because even Inazumans don't know much about Tatarasuna's past. But who'd have thought that... Uh, if you don't mind, I'd love to show you all my outline for the book I'm writing about Tatara Suna. Go ahead, show oh, me. Hold on, Sawada. Don't you think that's a bit of a deep dive for a first read? Well, fair point. In that case, please ease yourselves in gently by taking a look at Akaba's latest essay draft. Oh, he just wanted to go first. Let that's what it was. Let me give you some background. This all started with the discovery of some records in Tatara Suna. The writings mentioned someone by the name of Mikoshi Nagamasa, who crafted a fine blade. But in the end, he threw it into a fire to destroy it, and killed his servant Katsuragi. Why? Well, no one knows. Katsuragi? Apart from the swordmaker, his servant, and the one who wrote this all down, 
The records also mention a kabuki mono. This seems to be an Inazuman word for an eccentric stranger, someone who dresses funny or acts in an unusual way. You know a lot of those. That's right. Akaba's teacher has spent quite some time researching these events on the ground. This kabuki mono lived in Tatara sooner for a while before disappearing without a trace. And shortly afterwards, as Akaba mentioned, things got pretty ugly. So first this strange person goes missing, mm -hmm. then a murder happens? Mm. Mm, seems kind of fishy to Paimon. Very. Yes, my thoughts exactly. So I helped out too. I asked everyone I could think of if they knew anything about what happened back then. And wow, did I get lucky! Stop Were you up all night for it? This part's important. I just wanted to make it stand out. It you seem very so eccentric yourself. That a friend of mine works at the government records office. He looked into it for me, and I can now confirm that all the aforementioned individuals did, in fact, live in Inazuma over 400 years ago. Even back then, Tatara Suna was already at the center of Inazuma's smelting industry. The man in charge was a government official named Niwa. Curiously enough, it seems like he went missing too. I'm trying to think if I know all the people he's talking about in some way. Could it be? Niwa, Niwa, Niwa. Wait, so there are two missing people in the story now? That's right! What's more, Niwa is a name with a lot of history to it. Have you ever heard of the great swordsmith clans of Inazuma? Yes. Oh, the swordsmiths? Yeah, um, like Ishin Art and so on? Yep, that was episode 115 for us. Wow, yes. You really know your stuff. That makes things easier. So basically, this Niwa was a distant relative of the Kaidahara clan. We know the one of them. Practitioners of Ishin Art. Something then seems to have happened in the Kaidahara clan, leading to their downfall. We heard about that too. I don't too. know the details, but taken in light of everything else going on around that time, it makes you wonder whether it's all connected somehow. The Kaidahara clan? Does this really just the connect water? with the last you left out the biggest regular story quest that I went through? There's more? Oh, yes, of course. How could I forget? How Brace could you? your minds, ladies and gents, for they are about to be blown. Or maybe Crazy. you won't believe your ears. I wouldn't blame you, of course, because in all my years as a writer, this is by far the most... Just get to it already. Get to the point, for e Pete's sake. Exactly, even though According we don't know who Pete information is. information acquired by Akaba's teacher, the Kabuki Mono was not a human, but a puppet. Ew. Why are you saying dots? I think we know that puppet. A puppet? We call him the Wanderer now. The Shogun puppet from the Electra Archon made... Maid should be ruling in Azuma with her as we speak. It couldn't be her. The Wanderer is also a puppet. The Balladeer is also a puppet. Scaramucci is also a puppet. Hat Guy is also a puppet. All four of them are the same puppet. It's him. The Kimono, uh, Kabuki Mono has to be the Balladeer. But what was he doing 400 years ago in Terasuna? Aha! Judging by the looks on your faces, you do know something after all. Yeah, that puppet is here in Samara now. With the Archon. Uh, <laughs> Clara Paimon and hope she keeps her mouth shut. Uh, no! Paimon just meant... Uh, <laughs> how creepy! The way you described it makes it sound like a ghost story. I agree. It does. But considering that non-human races in Inazuma are by no means uncommon, spooky events are to be expected. And that's exactly what my book is about. Please, take a look. Am I about to read his book? Holy crap, how much have we got to read? Oh my gosh, there's so much. Ah, ready to draw. Here we go. Author. Sabara. Sabara. Extract one. Dots, dots. A man arrived in Terasuna around three in the afternoon. From afar, he spied laborers walking along the mountain roads toward the factories, their shoes scuffed along with the jutting stones. They walked like people convinced that so long as they reached the fire raging in the mountain's belly, they might extract from it gems beyond price. The mood that the slight the mood that the sight inspired was ineffable. Beyond mere description for those not present to witness it. 
The man barked a cheerful greeting and sprinted to join the procession. Bear, a towering character who stood half a head taller, greeted him with a heavy slap on the back. Yet his words were filled with respect. Do my eyes deceive me, Sir Miyazaki? I cannot think that the return trip here from Inazuma City could have been easy for you. Let's scroll down. There's so much to freaking read. Miyazaki smiled like a young man taking the first steps on their journey. Expression relaxed. Why, Katsuragi, Inazuma is the realm of the almighty Shogun. I sailed upon the fastest ship, strode upon the swiftest sea routes. That d- What dangers could I have possibly faced? Well, you went the swiftest a lot. And what about the good news? There was some, naturally. The two burst into uproarious laughter, roughhousing with the other workers until the path's end. A young man dressed in a, l- a linen shirt and wearing a headscarf gazed into the dis- dancing flames of the furnace before him. Now the flames of a forge are unlike any other, for their intensity affects the resulting integrity of both metal and blade. So too then was the flame watcher an unusual individual. At his fingertips sat a lizard, and on his face he wore a smile. The workshop was huge, and the furnace was deeper within. A reasonable reasonable person might think that there should have been many working alongside the watcher, yet he stood alone. Only when Kataragi and Miyazaki strode into the room did the watcher turn. So, talking about going to a mountain where there was fire inside, it sounds like there was a blacksmith in there working is what they're saying. This watcher was Niwa, armory officer and administrator of Terasuna, born to the Niwa clan, which served as one of the three pillars of the Ishin Yet, Ishin art, Niwa never argued with his siblings and was a worthy successor by all accounts. The post he received as a result of his high standing with those in power served as a statement unto itself. Miyazaki handed a well-bundled text to Niwa as he adjusted his expression and said, It is as you have said, sir. The elders of your clan in the city do not think highly of our plan. Yet I still believe it to be worth a try. As such, I found the proper vendors and procured the materials that you requested. Niwa studied the text and nodded. We should try some of these new forging techniques. Whether Kadehara says yay or nay. Katsugari frowned and with a sigh he said, Forging is a precise and difficult undertaking. You know this better than most sirs. And still, you seek improvement each day with terrifying drive. Ah, should my lord Nagamasa hear this? The sourness in his face shall be hard to miss. This is extremely detailed to the point that he probably embellished a bit. That or someone wrote down everything exactly as was happening. This is what he wrote. So is he embellishing for story's sake while trying to get as much accurate information as he possibly can? How much of what I've already, I've already read is actually accurate? Niwa smiled, replying, How does the forging of your lord's great blade, Kataragi? Kataragi neither wanted to shame his master nor lie to his two friends, and yet he could not think of any way to deflect, and so groused, I see your ears are keen as your hands, Sir Niwa. The jokes of us unlearned men are as nothing before you. Miyazaki hid his grin. Upon hearing this, Niwa released the lizard from his hand into Kataragi's palm, and just as more, but just as more words were to be exchanged, someone came walking nearby. Their footsteps light with the cel- uh, with the celerity of youth. The head that peeked in was rough, and in the light of the fires, looked like an oily jewel. The young man placed some boxes, some boxed food at the side, and nodding, he prepared to leave. Katsuragi called after him, "What about your share? Aren't you going to eat?" The young man, upon hearing these words, found himself slightly at a loss. After a while, he answered. Very well, I'll try it. You are welcome to the food. We all eat the same fare, after all, Niwa said. The man nodded and left, seemingly deep in thought. Holy crap. Extract two. Dots. The kabukimono was by the coast. Sunset fell to the accompaniment of darkness. Fell to the accompaniment of darkness. Yeah, I said that right. The bands of twilight showed themselves not, for the place did 
for in their place did Thunderclouds royal. Is that supposed to be royal? Royal? Rumbling the omens of the coming rainstorm. Darkness filled the flesh of the sea, and the dusk bade the clouds to kneel upon the lands. The supplication mirroring the kabuki mono, with the knees bent and face pointed towards the waters. None passed that way. None knew what was waiting for it was waiting for in silence, what he was waiting for in silence. Time passed, unmeasured and uncounted, till a black cloud suddenly tore free from the sky and began to circle the kabuki mono, bearing down on him like a nightmare. Though he was not aware at first, after his studying gaze, he refined, after his studying gaze was refined by time, he understood. This cloud had marked him from the very start. Outbound, a fishing boat drew near, the lights of its bow flickering in and out of sight beneath falling sheets of wa- uh, rain. I say water, but rain is water. But not quite the right, right texturization? Textualization? I don't know words. A mist unspooled across the sea, across the area, stealing sight from the fisherman. Reported, uh, repeatedly, he explained, It is but dusk. How are my eyes darkened? Is there anyone that can deliver my boat upon the safe tides? Like a falling spear, the black cloud reached the bottom of the boat and was joined in its befretness of direction. Like a charging beast, they plunged into the shoreline. Scant steps away, the kabuki mono stood idle, slanting his head to study the grand wreck. Oh, it wrecked. It wrecked right into the shoreline of the kabuki mono. Why do I feel like the Kabuki Mono is the balladeer? That's what they said earlier, right? My mind hasn't completely made, completely made the connection of it. Not but half an arm was left of the one who had cried out for help. And with a plop, it landed at the Kabuki Mono's feet. Wait. The, the man or the half an arm? He crouched to the better study the object, straining against the urge to take a bite out of it. What? Out of the... Take a bite out of the arm. If I wasn't on the page that the Kabuki Mono was the balladeer of being a puppet, I would say it was cannibalism. Unless it's like a homunculi puppet. Yet he did not, for the dark clouds swirling down had already picked the remnants of the ship clean. The Kabuki Mono stared at it, at it blankly, like an awakening dream, like an awakening dreamer. That's weird wording. When he returned to himself, the clouds had scattered, as if they had never been there at all. As for the ship, could it have been struck down by a storm? Who was to know? Not the Kabuki Mono. Well, then how does anybody know? The Kabuki Mono was the only one left alive that was there. Apparently, the man that cried out for help died with only half of his arm landing in front of the Kabuki the Kabuki Mono, who was thinking about taking a bite out of it before the dark clouds swept everything up except for the Kabuki Mono. I'm confused. Let's continue to extract three. Ah, uh, the reading is almost done. Dots. Katsuragi rushed to the doorway and shouted, My lord, things go ill at the furnace. I have searched for Sir Niwa, but there is no trace of him. And much time has passed since Sir Mi- uh, Miyazaki left to seek aid. But he has yet to send us any miss missive. Look. Uh, Mikoshi Nagamasa turned slowly, his face grave as one attending a funeral. He spoke then, his words heavy laden. I wish not to say such words, Katsuragi. But Sir Miyazaki may never return. Katsuragi peered past Nasamaga's broad, stiff shoulders beyond the windows. The cloud above boiled in waves of black, as if darkness now was the only weather, and might even morph into an abyssal beast and devour Tarasuna whole. Over ten people had already perished. That was why. Why? Katsuragi recoiled as if struck. Yes! It was coming back to him now, in dribs and drabs. That was why they had set out to seek aid. Miyazaki had been the first to set sail, The clouds had only just begun to form then. Traveling from Tarasuna to Inazuma to ask for support was normally no great feat, and yet there had been no sign of his return. The second ship was sent, followed by a third and a fourth. 
till the Kabuki Mono himself had departed upon the tides under foul skies and ominous fortunes. It had been Katsuragi who had brought him back and treated him as, a, as his own, and it pained him greatly to see the lad go. Yet the situation in Terasuna was severe. Even, even should they sacrifice more lives, it would have been worth it to gain a, assistance from Inazuma City. Was Miyazaki the person that called for help, that the only thing left was half his arm? In the black clouds. Oh, it's the storm that the Raiden Shogun put out to stop anybody coming and leaving from Inazuma, isn't it? Wait, does that make sense? It does, because you have to know how to maneuver it. That's how we were able to get in, is Beto knew how to maneuver in through it. Because otherwise, they wouldn't let anybody in. Or, wait. Is Terrasuna the place that's always covered in that thick fog? Where, like, nobody is left alive and nobody acknowledged our existence because they were all remnants of the past, except for the one kid who was, like, a ghost that was still a remnant of the past but was able to communicate with us? I think that was, like, episode 75.5 parts 1 and 2 that I recorded. Anyway, let me continue on with the rest of the story. Niwa was gone, and none can find him. Afterwards, Nagamasa led a search party into the... Uh, mountains in the area around the furnace, all to no avail. Folk began to wonder if Niwa might have encountered an accident, but worry soon turned to suspicion, and they won- uh, wondered if he had fled, unwilling to bear the sin of having caused these incidents. The people grew ever more suspicious, and Nagamasa himself strained against his discontent and fury. His face had grown to resemble the crumbling, uh, rumbling clouds above, Suddenly, a figure flashed by. The presence did not go unnoticed by Nagamasa. He drew his blade and cut, though only nicked the silken veil the intruder wore. For a moment, they swayed, and then, like a marionette pulled by strings, they moved behind Nagamasa, laughing darkly. Are you seeking someone, my lord? Niwa, perhaps? Nagamasa bellowed in fury. You dare address Sir Nawa directly? Yet the figure parted like mist before his falling blade, only to rematerialize beyond reach, but not beyond sight. A ghastly apparition indeed. Was it you who slew my people? Nagamasa howled and charged, held back by uh, Katsuragi, des- uh, Katsuragi's desperate grip. As his senses returned to him, he re- realized he was but an inch away from falling into the furnace. It seems that the rest of his work remains unfinished. From the existing existing text, however, it is apparent that this novel of fantastical, colorful sensibilities born from the imagination well utilized. Yeah, so this is like his retelling of what the events could be based on what he has heard and found out while he was over in Inazuma. And this figure that rematerialized still sounds like it's probably Scaramucci. And he apparently put some type of illusion on Nagamasa, who had to be held back by Katsuragi, or else Nagamasa would have fallen into the furnace, which is probably what happened in in Niwa. There is a lot of depth just in all this and what we've already been told. And also, it's been like 25 minutes into recording, and I've been reading for most of it. Please read my essay draft as well. Ah! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, more reading. A brief analysis of possible events of historical importance in the Terasuna area. Details. This text belongs to a series of works sponsored by the Bahumana's Veil Cutter Project. It is yet to be numbered. Author. Akoba. Abstract. The Terasuna area has always been a major pillar of Inazuma's smithing industry. Two incidents have occurred here, and the details behind the first are vague at best. I believe, however, that there might be a hidden history behind the events that transpired. Hence, this paper will attempt to analyze what may have unfolded from the available data. Glossary. Terasuna area. Raiden uh, Gokaden. Makoshi Nagamasa. Kabuki uh, Kabuki Mono. What's 
I guess the glass three is supposed to be these four different parts. Oh, there's so much freaking reading. Introduction. This paper contains and expands the work of my mentor, Mr. Rumi, and his report on the happily hidden tale of Terasuna and is intended to further this avenue of research. According to the data, the blade forging techniques of Inazuma were originally handed down to the Electro Archon, also known as the Raiden Shogun. Using the arts they inherited from their Archon, the people of Inazuma devoted themselves to the process of forging. However, strange rumors that do not quite fit the steely nature of metalwork yet linger about Terasuna, which was the central pillar of the forging industry. There, the Mikoshi and Niwa clans, along with the eccentric puppet, serve as the three windows of insight we need to investigate the truth behind what happened. I think with all this reading going on and probably how long the mission will be after the reading, this will be like a two-episode thing. So be ready for this whole story to continue on to a second episode. Body! Stranger notes from the Teretsuna area. Their contents are as follows. One, perhaps I overstep, but I think that Sir Nagamasa's mood grows better when he forges blades. The obsession to cleanse the stain of the Mikoshi must eat at him. Also, Sir Karas, uh, Kera, Katsuragi, why am I messing up his name now? Discovered a nameless eccentric while patrolling the Nazuchi Beach. Two, the inspector bought a certain number of jade steel ingots. Sir Katsuragi discussed matters of smithing deep into the night with the vice armory officer. Three, we at last made a single Nagamaki. We call it the Daitatara Daitatara uh, Nagamasa. Wait, you gave it the name of the one guy that almost fell into the fire? The inspector was in high spirits and he and the vice army officer. So we're just getting like overviews of his overview, aren't we? Uh, Nozomu was so taken by the beauty of the Daitatara Nagamasa that he drew a picture of it and he performed a sword dance with the wandering eccentric. Four. And we could not find that eccentric. The inspector flew into a rage and slashed Ka uh, Kasaragi. The great blade cut deep into the flesh, cast his own Nagamaki into the furnace flame. Furnace is flame. The inspector killed Katsuragi. And I guess threw him and the Nagamaki into the flame. The Nagamaki being a sword, right? The Daitatara Nagamasa is the Nagamaki, right? I'm not sure if I'm right about that or not. There's a lot of information flying around. Nozomu could not abide by that order. He drew the completely melted weapon out of the furnace. He was horribly burned. Wait, no, 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 no. Nozomu, I think, is the person they say was thrown into the furnace, maybe. If it wasn't Niwa. Inspector flew into a rage and slashed Katsuragi. And then threw the Nagamaki into the furnace, which Nozum, uh, Nozomu, Nozomu, got the sword out of the furnace and got horribly burned and then five died that night. I dare say that while Sir Katsuragi may have committed malfeasance, it was out of the goodness of his heart. Wait. Who threw the Nagamaki into the fire? The inspector or Katsuragi? Because it's making it sound like with this part that Katsuragi threw it into the fire. But because of the dots, it's cutting off part of the sentence, so we don't have the whole thing about it to know whether it was the inspector or Katsuragi that did it. Did the inspector cut Katsuragi with the blade, so Katsuragi took the blade and threw it in the fire, which Nozumu, uh, Nozumu Mew went and pulled it out of the fire against order and then got horribly burned and died that night as a result from the burning, to which Katsuragi committed the malfeasance of throwing it into the fire, but it was out of the goodness of his heart. Because I'm, What is going on? The dots aren't helping. 
And now we got another name added to the mix. Uh, Kinjaru hid the Nazumaki in Nazumo's Naz- Nazumu's drawing in the arsenal. Nazumago is harsh. Nagamasa is harsh, but also knows right from wrong. But even so, he is not amenable to reason. His name indicates one obsessed with purity. Still, I and some households of ta- uh, Tarasuna, Tataras- ta- Tarasuna have not been blinded by the matter of Natsumaga's, Nat- Nagamasa's mother, Chiyo, and we trust him. I also remain unwilling to forget the joy of creating the Daitatara, Daitatara, yeah, Nagamasa with him, in that joy of watching the nameless eccentric perform the sword dance with Kataragi. There's really so much information. There's so much flying around that I'm not sure what's what, especially because we're getting blanks. Before we withdraw, oh, seven. Before we withdrew, we should have dive, divided the arsenal key into three parts. One for the inspector, one for the armory officer, the one to be left in uh, Tatarasuna itself to prevent theft. But we were in too much of a hurry, and neither the inspector nor the armory officer could be found. So I was so bold as to hide the three pieces within treasure chests in Tarasuna. Holy crap. Tarasuna is the foggy place where the electric bird takes its perch. We... Did we get the three piece, the three key pieces? Once this is done, I am checking my map to make sure that's not Terrasuna. If it is, holy crap! The seven notes mentioned uh, prior have been scattered across the Terrasuna area. Among the seven notes, six seem to be of good physical integrity, though they all look quite old. While the last one looks more recent, I believe that the first six notes and the last are of different time periods, though the gulf in years between them needs to be verified. The constants of the first six should also be related to each other, as the incidents mentioned are quite consistent with one another. Rumi once mentioned the happy hidden tales of Taratsuna. Ah, Tatarasuna. Tatarasuna. Yeah, it's Tatarasuna. Hereafter, only the hidden, known as the hidden tales, that in the past, researchers from Sumeru had investigated the cultural histories of Tatarasuna and Inazuma. Though the place has fallen into some degree of disrepair since the hidden tales were written, things have improved since the time when I wrote my original article. Regardless, what used to be an area of major industry remains a place of inhospi- inhos- most inhospitable. The residents of Tarasu- Tatarasuna may be found living and dwelling by the waters. The residents, when questioned, told the researchers of uh, Tatarasuna's golden age centuries of gold uh, when it was administered by Armory Officer Niwa, Vice Armory Officer Miyazaki, and Inspector uh, Mikoshi Mikoshi Nagamasa. Nagamasa. Mikoshi uh, Nagamasa. Why does this trip me up? It's like the Aranara stuff again. I guess just because everything is divided up by an A, like banana, and the Aranara stuff. It's throwing me off. Yet the elders among the locals with deep ties to the region also seem to be stressed, also seem to stress the fact that there were strange rumors surrounding their homeland's past. A great many of these rumors revolve around the yokai, who are so very characteristic of Inazuma's folk histories. A very small number, however, mentioned the word puppet. It should be known that puppets are neither traditional nor common yokai in Inazuma. This fact drew the attention of the researchers to delve further, and eventually the following pieces of information came to light. The puppet did once appear in Tatarazuna. Tatarasuna. Its visage and elegant its visage was elegant, and its apparel impeccable. The way it dressed hid all the joint lines on the body. If no one were to mention that it was indeed a puppet, it would be hard to tell at all. Additionally, this puppet seemed to possess special joint lines, which would fade with time. Potentially, 
even disappearing altogether, which would perhaps eventually make the puppet seem entirely human. That lines up with the ballad here. The name of the puppet was known to almost none. The folks, the some folk claimed to have spotted it appearing around Tatarasuna, while others mentioned encountering it in the central region of the area. Some even claimed that it would frequent the, frequent the beach. Tales spread of it standing beside the sea and gazing across the waters towards Inazuma's city. What it was, what it was that the puppet was gazing at remains a mystery. Well, the puppet was made by A. And it was looking across to where it was made. As mentioned earlier, the six notes all document a certain nameless eccentric. The eccentric, which could also be read as uh, kabuki mono, is is usually used in Azuma to refer to a figure who dresses or behaves in a particular manner. It is understandable, therefore, why this character would have left such an impression. Should the people of Tatarasuna indeed have had a puppet in their midst incurring mass panic? A good possibility considering the coexistence between yokai and humans in Azuma at large, then the puppet would have very likely become a local resident. What is less well known is if the kabukimono was just another title for this puppet. That's what I'm saying! I think it is! I know it's a name, uh, the Wanderer now, when you gotta name him. I wanna name him Kabukimono. If they don't let me, then I'm just gonna call him the Wanderer. Perhaps because it was uniquely dressed to distract attention from its more special characteristics. A workable theory, but one that still lacks enough evidence to support it. Still, it can be retained as an analytical lens of sorts. A list of individuals related to Tatarasuna has been compiled here based on the historical document from Inazuma. Starting from the administrators, the records are as follows. Holy crap, I've literally been reading for half an hour. Army Officer Niwa, full name Niwa uh, Hisaha, Isahade. Isahade, yeah. He was the interior of the Ishin Arch and successor to the Niwa clan. His family, along with the Akame and Kadeha- Akame and Kadehara clans, Kadehara clans, were together known as the Ishin uh, Sansaku. Records show that Niwa was a modest and intelligent individual who displayed remarkable talent in the administration of territory and people. His eventual whereabouts are unknown, but he was suspected to have left Tatarasuna with his family following the incident. Vice Armory Officer Miyazaki, full name. Miyazaki uh, Kaneo. Kaneo? He was Niwa's second in command. His origins are unknown, and he primarily assisted Niwa in forging and personal management. He was uh, effable. He was of effable temperament and had many friends in the region, including one uh, Mikoshi Nagamasa. Inspector. Oh! Nagamasa slash uh, Katsuragi. I still got to know who uh, Nozom Mew is. Inspector um, Mikoshi Nagamasa, the successor of the Mikoshi clan, adopted son to Oni warrior Mikoshi Chio, and the younger adopted brother to Mikoshi Machihiro. also known as Iwakara, the successor. With his mother missing and abandoned by his brother, Nagamasa alone bore the family name, striving daily to wipe the shame from their history. Though records state that Makoshi Nagamasa was a stubborn figure, he was also noted to be a person of moral virtue and integrity. It has been noted in various records that he practiced forging sores for self-cultivation and specially requested special instruction from Miyazaki to further his capabilities. However, after the famous blade, Daitatara Nagamasa was forged, he used it to slay his subordinate, Kataragi, for reasons unknown at present. Wait, 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 w
because it said that Nagamasa slashed Katsuragi. So Katsuragi took the blade and threw it in the fire, which uh, Nozomu grabbed out of the fire, got burned, and died because of his injuries. But Katsuragi was slain? Did he die as a result of his injury? After throwing the sword in the fire? What is going on? I feel like I have a grasp on it, but then there's things that I'm not sure. Like, there's still the missing pieces. Subordinate, Katsuragi. Katsuragi's full name and background may remain unknown. Despite all the materials I have sorted through, I have yet to find any, mo any more additional information regarding him. As one of Makoshi Naga... Uh, Nagamasa's subordinates. He was a lawyer, warrior, loyal warrior who had been saved by Nagamasa in his youth. From then on, he swore to stick by his lord through thick and thin and to give his life in service if it was if it was but asked of him. Well, he kind of gave his life to Nagamasa. So he, 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 he did stick to that. Oh, okay. Sweet. We're at the last scrolling of this whole thing. The Kabuki Mono, full name unknown, background unknown. From the many sources I've compiled, combined with Rumi's personal observations, this character might have been the puppet mentioned in the rumors. The Kabuki Mono was a figure of fashionable grace and gentleness. According to the hidden tales, he was brought back to, 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 uh, to Terasuna by Kasaragi and became a member of the community. When the Kabuki Mono first arrived in Tatarasuna, he knew nothing of cleaning, cooking, or any work of meticulous nature. The locals taught him their skills over time, showing him how to clean his attire, dance, and craft small trinkets. Records state that the Kabuki Mono was there when the Daitatara Nagamasa was forged, though his trail ends before uh, Makoshi Nagamasa slew Katsuragi. I believe that the Kabuki Mono was indeed an aforementioned puppet and that he quite likely had a hand in Katsuragi's death. It seems that the rest of the paper remains unfinished. One thing is for certain, though. A lot of thought was put into it. So... The way it seems, everybody but Nagamasa and Katsuragi and Nozumu Nozumu had disappeared and Nagamasa went after the Kabuki Mono who disappeared uh, Katsuragi grabbed Nagamasa from falling into the furnace did Nagamasa then get mad and slash Katsuragi with the blade to which then Katsuragi threw the blade in the fire died because of all of his injuries and Nozumu Nozumu pulled the blade out and died as a result of his injuries leaving Nagamasa as the last one alive there is really a lot to go off here Sawada was encouraging me to follow his more Ooh, I don't have to read anymore. Approach, but I Thank think you. essay should be grounded in facts. I don't think explaining everything away with mysterious forces will cut it. Oh, how about if I plug the holes in Sawada's narrative with political intrigue? Like, um, I could put a turf war between rival factions at the center of the whole series of events. So they're debating Wait, the series of events and everything. Ha <laughs> ha! Good one, Paimon. Yeah, it sounds more like a novel. Has this guy ever written an essay before? Akaba, look. Your teacher has researched this extensively. I've reached out to everyone I could think of. Whatever information we have now is all that there is to know. This is as much detail as you're ever going to get. Besides, if there really was a political power struggle going on at anything like the level you seem to be suggesting, what hope would we ever have of finding out the truth? Uh, good point. Okay, back to the drawing board, I guess. Hey, give me some time. I need to find a new angle on this. I'll leave it to you. We have some other 
your stuff to do, so we'll have to say goodbye for now. Good luck with your essay! Alright, thank you. If you find out any more info about all this, please do let me know. Thanks so much. What's the other stuff that we have to do? Just get away from them? Because I was not expecting to read for so freaking long. Hey, so that thing they were talking about, it has to do with the balladeer, doesn't it? Yes, he's the kabukimono. Okay, then even if we did know something about it, we probably couldn't share it with them, huh? After all, no. he kicked his butt and got him locked up. Information about people like that is usually super confidential, isn't it? Yeah, typically. If, if it's not public knowledge, Akabo already. Just pick a different topic. There must be as many essay topics as there are trees in the forest. There's no point in... In what? Why'd you stop? <gasps> What's wrong? Hey, did you see that? He literally just went by over there. It looked like... like... The ballad here. No, it can't have been. He got locked up. Oh, quick, let's catch up and see. I still want the balladeer. I hate that I didn't get him at that time when he was available. Wait, I just remembered. Want to do a roll? I bet I'm not going to get a gold, though. Yep, no gold, see? Oh, Rosaria, I haven't got one of you in a while. Magic guide, slingshot, emerald orb, emerald orb, skyrider sword, debate club. I can recognize the debate club the moment I see the outline. Raven bow, debate club. Ooh, the stringless. I haven't gotten one of these in a while. Well, okay then. I don't think we have enough of anything in order to do another roll, but you know that that's. Do this before time runs out. We just need one more. Wait, why are they? The acquaint fates to do a roll? No, intertwined. I always get the intertwined and the acquaint confused. All right. Let's go follow the balladeer. Oh, it's got a moochie. Sanctuary of Sasana. Let's go in. I don't see him. Nahida! There he is! Time for another cutscene. This, is this where we name him? Hi, Nahida. Nahida, bad news. We just saw Why does she always sound like she's talking to her too? Did he escape or? Ah, it's him! <laughs> sure enough, you're here. Hey, what are you doing in the sanctuary of Suristana? Aren't you supposed to be locked up? I know you must have a lot of questions. Please, allow me to explain. It was my idea to set the balladeer free. We made a deal, and he's going to do some investigation in Ermin Soul for me. A deal? <laughs> you sure you trust this guy? What did you expect? Why do you think Sumeru would keep me around otherwise? Or maybe killing me is all you can think about. But if that's the case, why haven't you done it already? Don't flatter yourself. It was... <sighs> Nahida said there's still some mysteries in you to figure out. Ah, so if it were up to you, you'd finish the job? Well, if you're a threat. I had you all wrong. There I was thinking you were just getting cold feet. I mean, if I put some socks on, they wouldn't be as cold, but that's... Mm, well, that escalated quickly. Not a good start. Could I ask you all to please calm down? But Paimon's worried about you, Nahida. Don't let him trick you. <laughs> it's not every day you see people questioning the God of Wisdom's judgment. Just when you think you've seen it all. Don't you dare try to drive a wedge between us! 
As long as the terms are reasonable, I don't think there's a problem in making a deal. Even with the Balladeer. Well, I for one have no reason to doubt you. Considering you even struck a deal with the doctor. Yes, one in which I gained valuable information. You'll come to understand more about that in the fullness of time. The Balladeer's power was all but completely spent after your battle. He's no longer strong enough to be a strategic threat to us. That puts him in quite a precarious position. Plus, he's a former Harbinger with knowledge of many of the Fatui's sensitive secrets. Being stuck here in Sumeru could make him a sitting duck, depending on how the Fatui plan to respond. Wait a second. Farmer? You mean, he's not a Harbinger anymore? I take no pleasure in saying this, but... It seems as if the doctor had no intention of welcoming back a loser, so... So he talks about, like, the trash. <laughs> the fact she just calls him a loser outright, too. Sometimes it's you using them. Other times, it's them using you. Most human relationships are this way. Certainly all the stable ones are. That's how it was between me and the Fatui. And also between each of the Harbingers. So as long as you have some value to offer, nobody will ever abandon you. But after recent events, even I have to admit that I'm not worth quite what I used to be. Really? What a crying shame. <laughs> well, if the Fatui are going to reevaluate my utility, I need to have a backup plan for myself. As we discussed, I don't like causing harm to living beings. And you said you need protection. So, why not join forces with us? I think these two have made their objection to that idea fairly clear. Don't you? And they're your friends. So I guess you'll be siding with them. Yeah, obviously! Nahira, don't listen to him! Then let's put that discussion to the side for now. We still have time. Today can be a trial run. Where we go from here will depend on how well we manage to cooperate today. All right. Then I'll do what we agreed. Good. Go now, and keep in touch. Nahira, are you... Uh, are you serious about this? Yes. I have my reasons for this decision. In fact, I'm largely doing it for your benefit. For me? Yes. As I told you once before, there's information about your twin in Ermin's soul. Oh, oh yeah, she did say that. Actually, that's the whole reason we came to see you today. So, you have an update on that? Mm-hmm. You may remember me mentioning that the Fatui had not included your twin's details in the Descender category. This is an extremely important point. It's possible that the Fatui have other information that even I don't know about. And since the Balladeer used to be one of them, he'll be better acquainted with this information than I am. He was granted the power to connect with Ermensoul when he almost became the god of a new era. Even though he no longer has the Gnosis, some traces of its power remain in him. He can still connect. The amount of information in Ermensoul is vast beyond description. Sifting through all of it without knowing what to look for would take too long, even for me. So I asked the Balladeer to search in Ermensoul for any information about the Descenders. He's more familiar with this kind of information, and should be able to find it more quickly. What if he lies to you? Exactly! Or what if... You... Paimon just doesn't trust him! He's treated us as enemies every time we've run into him! I think we were the ones that did that this time. But sometimes, everything is dictated by which side you're on. How things will go in the future depends on what information he brings back. And Traveler, I yes. know what your heart desires most of all. Our minds have connected several times before. There is a corner of your heart reserved for an intense longing. A feeling of being all alone in the dark. Searching for the one candle whose light still burns. As Sumeru's deity, it is my responsibility to be on guard against the Balladeer. But as someone who counts you as a friend, I want to do something for you. 
If this deal with the Balladeer can give you the answers you've been longing to find, then it's worth it. Thank you, Nayira. It's my pleasure, really. You're Sumeru's hero. You've more than earned it. Hmm. Paimon's still worried about this idea. Is there anything we can do to help? I was going to contact you about that, but then you suddenly showed up on your own accord. It seems like we have a telepathic connection. In fact, I was going to ask you to supervise the Balladeer on my behalf while he carries out the task I assigned. Even though he only has a fraction of his full power left, that's still a fraction of a former Harbinger. If you could accompany him, it would put my mind at ease. Of course, I'll be there to help guide you through Ermansoul from the outside. Got it. Glad to be able to help. Great. Thank you. Prepare yourselves. I'm going to transport you into Ermansoul. Oh, I'm not going to be able to leave, am I? Is this actually going to be like a shorter mission? Wow. Because most of the time we'll be taken up by reading? different here compared to last time. Oh no, I'm already dropping Colors frames. gentler. Guess that must be because Sumeru's at peace now. Possibly. Look at that. Hot on my heels. You know, you didn't have to cut your catch up short just to keep me company. Oh, but I guess you panicked when you realized that I might enter Ermin's soul ahead of you. Nahida sent me to babysit you. Shut your beak, jailbird! No way a prisoner gets to be so smug! I understand that prisoners have to put up with harassment from the guards, but right now, I'm on temporary release. So maybe you should think about backing off a little. Mm. Sounds like a successful rendezvous. I need to be quite clear about something. In a few moments, you'll be entering into the innermost region of Ermansoul. It is an environment like no other, and the most important place in all of Sumeru. Most Unlike important? anywhere else, Ermansoul's inner region consists exclusively of torrents of information. You must put aside your differences and be extremely careful as you navigate your way through. Okay. I know there are many grievances between you mm -hmm. on both sides, mm -hmm. but it is essential that you remain calm after entry. This is as much for your own safety as anything else. Understood. Let's call it truce, but only until this mission's over. Let's cut each other a little slack, shall we? We are going to be traveling together after all. Per my agreement with Lesser Lord Kusanali, I'll be at the front. It's my job to lead the way and get rid of any obstacles in our path. All you have to do is keep your pretty eyes open and try not to fall behind. You think my eyes are pretty? <laughs> You sure are confident. Paimon will give you that. You make it sound like you're even more experienced at adventuring than us. If there are no further objections, I suggest we get going. Or did you need some time to mentally prepare yourselves? Mm, I think I have plenty. Ugh, the snark on this guy. It's unbearable. There's no need for all the biting sarcasm. <laughs> we can start now. Ermansoul access grid. Initiating connection procedure. Is this a small sapling? Oh, darn it! Come on, let's catch up with him! What if we find out the information about Scaramushi during this whole thing? Or we dive into the recesses of his mind or his history? Side of Ermansoul. It's different than what I imagined. Ooh, Paimon's never seen anything like this. And it feels like a sacred place. Ermansoul is closely intertwined with the entirety of Tavat. Every bit of information flowing here means something. Pick your jaws up off the floor. It's time to go. My jaw don't extend Why that deep. Why is it that Paimon just wants to do the opposite of everything he says? <sighs> Because you don't like him. Lesser Lord Kusanali, we will now proceed to the heart of Ermansoul. Can you still sense where the heart of Ermansoul is? Yes. Permission to begin searching for information there? 
Permission granted. Go ahead. Let's go. Stay close. Don't go running off. Hey, so... Say we did go running off in here. What would happen? Probably get lost. <laughs> For a very long time. Wh what are you smirking at? I was just imagining the look on your travel companion's face if you went and got lost. Anything's possible in here. You can't rule anything out. So if you want to stay safe, your best option is to stick close to me. Okay. Another sapling? Did we touch it? Can I touch it? These sapling things have oh, spread I can't touch out. The fragments have dissipated. Some space. Those are all what? packets of information from inside Ermansol. Be careful not to touch them. Okay, so no touch. Location change. It looks like we have been transported to another place. So basically, they're just jumping us from one place to another. The space is indeed unusual, but it seems that the Balladeer is more used to it than I. No wonder he mentioned about getting lost. Huh. What do you know? He was actually telling the truth. <sighs> is he mocking me again? Yep. Uh, what is it this time? There's a time and a place to lie. But this definitely isn't it. So why don't you relax your guard a little? Because she still doesn't trust you. I'll trust him. We're here. What a huge tree! Wait, wait, wait. Ugh. This is the center of er Ermansoul. All the information of the world is flowing through it. Lesser Lord Kusanali. Good, you made it. Are you ready? Yes. Ready when you are. Then please begin. Preparing to access cognitive currents. Establishing waypoint. The Balladeer's actually doing what Nahida tells him. Guess he must want to stay alive. What's he going to respond with? He hasn't put up any resistance. And he seems good at working on the front line. Maybe he had a similar role in the Fatui. First, uh, Aquaba and Sabada's uh, stories. Now this. What a strange individual. The rest is up to you. If you discover anything at all, make sure to share it with us. Will do. Huh. For once, we're the ones with nothing to do. Just sit back and watch, Paimon. Traveler, Paimon, would you like to talk? Nahida? Is this a telepathic conversation? Yes. I've also invited Paimon to join. So don't use your mouth, Paimon. What the? We can talk to each other inside our heads? Yes, we can. I'm guessing that you don't want us to disturb the Balladeer. <laughs> That's part of it. Plus, we're all friends. There's nothing wrong with us talking like this once in a while. True. Paimon's never tried this before. This is I'd be scared to be inside of Paimon's head. I ask you something. Don't you think the Balladeer's a bit of a walking contradiction? He's always talking back, but he seems to listen to what you say. Yes, he seems to excel at doing odd jobs for others. As I've told you before, there are still some mysteries for him to resolve. Things that are clear as day to me, but that he has yet to understand. Perhaps today will be the day that he finds some answers. Is this about his past, the betrayals, and the other events in Inazuma? Well done. Smart and attentive as always. Thank you. Actually, I caught a glimpse of a few things when I ran to Pasia at Partistia. You relate what you saw of the Balladeer's mind while there. So, you made contact with that part of his mind. Well, it's true. Betrayal turned the Balladeer into the person he is today. Huh. Paimon thought nothing could get under that guy's skin. Turns out, he can get hurt and angry just like anyone else. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a history, Paimon. 
Even if you're a puppet created by the Electro Archon. Speaking of puppets, we ran into two people at the Academia today talking about an essay. Turns out their topic was about the Tatarasuna incident. Nahida, do you know anything about that? If you mean the mysterious events, the Kabuki Mono and so on, yes. I know about all of that. Really? Because from what they were saying, it sounded like lots of Tatarasuna's history is still unexplained. And most of the information we have now is just from people filling the gaps with their imagination. At least that's what they thought. You tell Nahida the story of the two's writing. Oh? How interesting. Those two managed to deduce quite a lot through guesswork alone. Guess that's what it means to be so part of the academia. It right? Probably for the most part. Well, they guessed right about one thing. Tatarasuna was sabotaged. Did he do it? Must be a riveting conversation you three are having. Funny how all the good ones happen when I'm not involved. Uh, uh what makes you think we're talking to each other? <laughs> Because we're not talking Don't to him. Don't insult me. You're having a private conversation without me. Obviously, I must be the topic of said conversation. We have every right to keep certain things confidential. Of course you do. You can't have your prisoner knowing too much. So, uh, have you found anything yet? Still looking. Don't get your hopes up, though. You and your twin come from outside this world. It wouldn't surprise me if there was nothing on either of you in Ermensoul at all. I doubt that. Wait! How did you know about that? Didn't Nahida tell there you? There might be nothing on Aether. It's not like we've never but... met before. And anyway, you're world famous. It'd be more surprising if I didn't know a few things about you. Every conversation with you is hard work. Your attitude is better than I thought. Right now, we have to keep the peace. I'm not interested in creating more misery for myself. And making cordial conversation is something I can manage. Huh? Yeah, but it's quite a drag, don't Wait. you think? Aru? This light. It looks similar to those saplings. What could it be? Anonymous data. Hey, don't you forget the It's equipment. about him. You have to share it with us. Shh. Just wait. He is true gold. Mr. Niwa, are you certain this yep. is worth the risk? We are talking about Tatara Suna's furnace, after all. It may not pay to act rashly. There's no one else who can enter the furnace. It has to be me. Enter the furnace? Is that so? <sighs> well, since you insist. <gasps> it's... The name Niwa. Man in charge of Tatsura... Uh, Dang it! Didn't hit it fast enough. Stumbled on the name and lost everything else. I have been in Tatara Suna for some time now. You have shown me great hospitality, as has Mikoshi Nagamasa, and indeed, everyone else. Under your leadership, Tatara Suna is a warm, welcoming place. Like a giant village. People are gainfully employed. Their lives have purpose. They are motivated. As I understand, the Raiden Shogun has, in recent years, eliminated much of the evil that plagued Inazuma. As for Tatara Suna, it was originally established as a means of safely disposing Crystal Marrow. The I thought I was about to say Crystal Marrow. <laughs> crystal Marrow as a raw material has since flourished, giving rise to generations of swordsmiths. Some world-renowned, Others, unknown. All passing on their legacy. Skills, blood, dreams. Every smith brought into this trade looks to find their purpose between steel and blade. That is why you accepted the proposal brought to you by myself and Akame. Yes, well, were it not for you coming to Inazuma and happening to make Akame's acquaintance, the two of you never would have joined forces. And he would be the first to admit that there's no way he could have revolutionized our forging process like this on his own. At least not on the same timescale. You allowed Akame to take all the credit for a method that you jointly developed. He sold it to me. And now, 
every piece of ore here is smelted using the new technique. Even now, you remain one of Tatarasuna's key consultants, working right here alongside us. I believe it is you, sir, who are truly responsible for the changes in our manufacturing and forging methods. <laughs> you flatter me. From the outset, I saw much that was commendable in the forging industry of Inazuma. And it has been my great honor to befriend you all. So is you he say, the saboteur? Ash, but is this really the truth? My good sir, what do you mean? I tried to resist thinking it was all connected. Because I didn't want to speculate. And I didn't want to believe that things could turn out this way. What have we gained from adopting your new technology? Ominous black smoke? Mounting production problems? Yep. Worker fatigue and casualties are up and continuing to rise at an alarming rate. And recently, as you well know, someone died because of that strange filth inside the furnace. We've kept the truth from spreading outside, but still, I suspect you understand it better than I do. None of the people who went out to get help have come back. Now, our mutual friend, the Kabuki Mono, is taking the Golden Feather to Narukami Island to seek an audience with Shogun. This is our last hope. But that doesn't phase you, does it, Escher? Nothing does. Otherwise, why would you still be standing there with that smile on your face? <sighs> I'm just surprised that you finally chose to be so sincere. I'm sure you've been harboring these suspicions for quite some time. Is this a joke to him? Mikoshi Nagamasa may have noticed that there was one common denominator among all these events. Namely you, Escher. But Mr. Mikoshi is more cautious than I. He does things by the book. After all, Nagamasa is the adopted son of Mikoshi Torichio, the yokai struck down by the Shogun's own hand. If he truly seeks to redeem his family's honor, an abundance of caution is well advised. You're well informed on the subtleties of his situation for a mechanic all the way from Fontaine. Are you sure you're not a little overqualified? Why, Mr. Niwa, are you suggesting I find a job as a diplomat? Sadly, I am so very attached to my craft. Enough, Escher. I'm here because an evil force is raging inside the furnace. And someone needs to take your new device inside the high-risk zone so we can absorb it and put an end to the problem. I'm in charge here. And I'm about to take some responsibility and head inside. Probably to my death. But what about you? What was the eye twitch? What are you still doing here? Judging from the look in your eyes, you don't seem to trust me. Drop the act! We're past that now. Whoever you are, it looks like your plan to destroy Tatara Suna has worked. I just want to know what you're still doing here. What's left? Don't you have all your answers by now? Honestly, I'm just waiting for the right moment. A moment like this, where you finish talking and I stop you from entering the furnace. <sighs> you... You... <sighs> You're a little smarter than I initially gave you credit for. I thought I'd disguise myself exceptionally well, at least for the first few days. But to my surprise, you had your people look into my background right from the start. It's a long journey from Inazuma to Fontaine, but that didn't stop them. Eventually, they managed to confirm that Escher was an alias, and that I was not from Fontaine at all. Of course you're not. And yet, despite all of that, you still fail to realize my true identity, and what I seek in Tatarasuna. Did you really think you would be able to see through my plan? <sighs> If you kill me, there's no one who can get inside the furnace. So you're really going to destroy this place? Is that it? Oh, but you're quite wrong. There is one other person. 
Mm, some what? may not What's see this voice? him as a person, but you told him yourself. You're not a puppet. You're a human. You're just missing a heart. <gasps> Whoever you're working for won't get away with this. They'll be found out. But this makes no sense. It's not the doctor's voice, right? What are you really trying to accomplish? I feel like it's not his voice. That's why I haven't thrown Why that out the moment I said his voice sounded familiar. It's no trouble at all. Patience is a virtue which I have in abundance. This is all part of a carefully controlled experiment. If you must know, I'm happy to divulge my true identity. I'm a Fatui harbinger. It is Call the doctor. The doctor. He was alive 400 years ago? Fatui? Who? What do you want? Just to create a minor inconvenience for your nation. That's it. What a jerk. That's why you gave us your cursed technology? Just to let loose the evil energy from the crystal marrow? <laughs> Look how even the righteous soul is filled with venom when faced with its demise. My device functions precisely as you say. It is the only chance you have of preventing a catastrophe and keeping the truth from the outside world. However, I did not make it with you in mind. Oh. It is easier for a person to be possessed by evil spirits when they are filled with hate. So give in to your fury. I want to see what happens when a malevolent heart is placed into an unsuspecting puppet. Make no mistake, even without you, Scaramushi has Niwa's heart. Puppet would only end up being used by someone else instead. What other reason would a human have for befriending one who is not of our kind? <coughs> what do you mean? Dogs are not of our kind, and we befriend them all the time. You're ignorant, Doctor. If you give him my heart, tell him that both Nagamasa and I see him as one of us. Are we going to see a tear from Scarabucci? To prove to anyone. Because not everyone just wants to use other people. The only ones who think like that are people like you. What a beautiful way to see the world. It almost makes me feel a little guilty. Hmm. Then out of respect for you, I shall redefine myself. Think of me as a monster or a demon, if you wish. At least this way your death is not a consequence of your own folly turning you into an easy target. You simply lost to something more powerful than you could ever hope to defeat. I say, Mr. Niwa, let's see what happens. Will your puppet friend become a human? No, that will prove quite impossible. Mr. Niwa. Already dead. What a pity. <sighs> Jester, I have completed the task you gave me. Creating a gap and infiltrating Inazuma's inner workings. <laughs> what fun it was. Who's Jester? I'd like to introduce a puppet to you. If he proves useful, let's make him our newest comrade. And if not, let's turn him to dust. Uh... <sighs> Scaramushi? Hey, are you all right? Dottore. <laughs> Dottore. He believes he was betrayed, but he doesn't realize who he was actually betrayed by. I feel like he was supposed to like scream out his name then. 
good. But was that? They messed up the, the voice acting or the editing for that. Did he turn into a mechanic from Fontaine? I'm afraid so. He was the one behind the Tatarasuna incident. But why did we see things from his perspective? When I touched the doctor to confirm whether he'd eliminated all his segments, I read this memory in his mind. You have to admit, it must be the truth. Maybe so, but it means nothing. Does it? But this memory shows that Niwa didn't betray you. He never meant for you to be the one to take the device into the furnace. You know very well what that means. Even more so than I. He never betrayed you. But what you believed was the original betrayal. This betrayal was a lot. Uh, whew. This betrayal was a lie that he has believed for hundreds of years. Was this part of the doctor's experiment? If the betrayal never happened, it existed only in his imagination. But where does this leave him? Let's give him some space. He looks really mad. Paimon doesn't want to be anywhere near him right now. Okay, let's go over there. We need to give him some time to process his emotions. Sounds good. Paimon's still confused about the Tatarasuna incident. So, the doctor was behind it, but why has that gotten him so worked up? Nobody has ever deceived you like that, Paimon. It's natural that you find it difficult to understand. Perhaps he needed to learn this someday. So now you have the complete picture. Katsuragi took the Kabuki Mono to live with the people of Tatarasuna. Later, the doctor showed up disguised as a mechanic from Fontaine. And that's when the trouble began. It was all a horrific experiment planned by the doctor. Everything he did was just to plant seeds of disaster in Inazuma that would bear fruit in the future. Of all the unwitting participants in the doctor's experiment, the Balladeer became the main test subject. After the events you just saw in that memory, the doctor put Niwa's heart into the device and handed it to the Balladeer. Then, he instructed him to enter the furnace and absorb all the filth caused by the smelting process. The load was far beyond what he expected, but the Balladeer survived. He left the furnace in sheer exhaustion and said to the mechanic, This device seems to have protected me. What's in it? The mechanic answered, Niwa fled this place for fear of punishment, but he left you a gift. He said it's the one thing that you've been looking for. He took it straight from the chest of one of his innocent servants. The mechanic removed the withered heart from the device as he spoke. The Balladeer was stunned that such unthinkable cruelty had brought him the thing he'd been longing for his entire life. A heart acquired through cold-blooded murder is a cursed thing, but it has protected him from the filth. He thought Niwa had completely betrayed him, and yet this very betrayal had ensured his survival. Overwhelmed with anger and sorrow, the Balladeer threw the heart to the ground, and left Tatarasuna without looking back. Holy moly! So the doctor killed an innocent man and pinned everything on the victim? That's terrible! Being betrayed and abandoned by a close friend is sure to cause great resentment. Now we know what was behind his decision to take revenge on the Raiden Shog uh, Gakoden a hundred years ago. But it doesn't mean that vengeance was the right decision. Yes. Only if he understands this can he choose a new path forward. Tatori, you brazen face! <clears throat> Niwa didn't run from justice. You killed him! Scaramucci? A while later. Shall we see how he's doing? Hey, you all right? <laughs> That's a scary expression. 
Are you worried about me? If we didn't have such a history, I'd almost think that qualifies me to be your friend. We just want to make sure this doesn't affect the plan. It won't. I'll keep my end of the deal. That was an insensitive thing to say to Scaramucci after everything you just went through. Are you investigating the stuff we want to know about? My mom, shut up. That's why we're here. But unfortunately, there's no information about the Descenders in Ermansoul. Even if you can't find anything, that seems to confirm it. Ermansoul does not keep records on the Descenders. Anyone who comes from beyond this world is not counted as part of Tavat. So I'm not in there? Does that mean we have to leave empty-handed? We didn't. We already haven't. Not unexpected, but still. Thank you. Don't thank me just yet. Hmm, you look really upset. <laughs> well, since Ermin's soul was a dead end, I guess I can share some other info that might interest you. What a beat-o. Huh? About what? The reason why there are records about your sister and Ermin's soul. It might have something to do with Conria. Apparently, Conria was her first destination when she arrived in this world. Plus, she only came to this world because the heavens responded to the summoning. The heavens responded? The jester told me this himself. You can take his word on this. He was a royal mage in Conria and lived with your sister for a time. The jester, another Fatui Harbinger? Harbinger? Why? I don't know the details. Harbinger? It's up to you whether you want to believe me. All I can say is, I wouldn't lie to you about this. Did you get all that, Lesser Lord Kusanali? Yes. Astonishing news. Does this info count towards my mission? It wasn't for Mermansoul, but was it valuable? Very valuable. Good. You look happy In with that. In that case, I'll take some time for myself now. Huh? What have you done? Lesser Lord Kusanali was right. My power's all but completely spent. Even if I use all of the divine power left in me, I can't sustain this shield for very long. I shared a secret with you, and now you owe me. So in return, I'd like you to answer a question for me. What do you want to know? Give me your hand. That's quite the thing to know. Hmm? Can you hear my voice inside your head? Are you trying to brainwash me? No, I can't do anything like that anymore. At most, all I can do is exchange a few words with you. So tell me, in this world, is it possible to change the past? He wants to undo all the damage I was done. Wait, why would you ask that? Done. Huh? What the? What happened? I not only saw you hold hands for a second. You're butting into our romance? Nothing. I was just thanking him for helping me. Wait, that look. Did he see me hesitate? But that was because I know about Greater Lord Rukadavata. Oh, I think. So long. By not denying. Wait, why I did it skip it? You get yourselves out of here quickly. I said no auto, but it skipped it. Freaking! Where are you going? Hey, wait up! Didn't you say that to go running off? Come on, we have to stop him. Fast reaction time, but I don't think we'll be seeing each other again. From this day forth, the names Balladeer and Kabuki Mono will cease to exist. Okay, we can call that. Those who died in Tatarasuna because of me deserve another chance at life. Hey, Balladeer, don't do anything stupid. You know. Yeah, I didn't even say everything. Did like I'm incest. looking at the playback. Hordes of the puny things swarming together can be a real nuisance, and I enjoy nothing more than to stamp them out like the pests they are. But if a colony of harmless ants isn't threatening anyone, I guess they deserve to be left alone. Luckily, everything can be set right. 
It's time to solve this once and for all. Balladeer! Balladeer! Uh-oh, he disappeared! Come on, we gotta find him somehow! Yes, we can hear you, Nahida. Nahida! Traveler, Paimon, Paladir, what happened just now? I was suddenly cut off by some kind of power. That was the Paladir. It was the Paladir's fault. He, he shut you out! You tell Nahida everything that happened. I didn't think he'd be capable of something like that with so little power left. Yet he was. Did he keep some of his power hidden when he was defeated? Or... Did he achieve something beyond his abilities? And it took everything he had. Where the heck did he go? Oh, it's all our fault. We were supposed to keep an eye on him. Sorry, Nahida. Don't be. It's not your fault. Please, let me handle this from here. Even though I'm not sure I can solve it. We're running out of time. Follow my lead and get out of Ermin's soul as soon as possible. What's your lead? Or is she just dragging this out? I guess she's just dragging this out. That'd be easiest. An inn or something? This is an emergency. I'll have to ask you to stay here for now. Everything's arranged, and nobody will disturb you. No, I want to help you. I'm sorry, but this isn't something I need your help with. Leave this one to me. An emergency? How bad is it? Nahida, will you be okay? Don't worry. If my assessment is correct, though there may be some minor disturbances, it won't lead to a disaster. Please rest and recover your strength here until I say it's safe. Her voice is gone. Paimon can't shake the feeling that something really big has happened. What do you think the Balladeer meant? And why did he suddenly grab onto you before? You want to know if you can travel to the past? Yeah. Paimon doesn't remember Greater Lord Rukudavata, and the Balladeer's question was a strange one. It's hard to explain in full, and the truth might be very distressing for Paimon. I'll skip to the part about Greater Lord Rukudavata for now. I'll skip the part about Greater Lord Rukudavata for now, and focus on the Balladeer. You tell Paimon what the Balladeer asked you and what he might be planning. He wants to change the past? But surely that's impossible! It's not easy, that's for sure. Did Rukadavada really, like, disappear from the past? I feel more like she just wiped herself from everybody's memory. Which isn't really changing the past. It's just changing the perception. Right! You can't just rewrite history. All that stuff happened already in real life! I feel like... No. It's like, um... Imagine Paimon drink all in. Even if no one was there to see it, Paimon would sure as heck remember drinking it. Yeah, great example. I felt like this was like the if a tree falls in the forest and no one's around to hear it. Does it make a sound? But that's not what this is. And yes, it does make a sound. Doesn't matter if nobody was around to hear it. about this. Paimon can't help but feel scared about what he might do. I think he just wants to undo that past. He wants to save his friend. Ooh, Paimon's so confused. Maybe he wants to erase himself from history. No, I think he just wants to stop the doctor. Huh? Ah! Paimon, are you okay? from 
history? It's unthinkable. Is that really possible in Ermansoul? Not necessarily, but maybe. I'm just guessing here. Indeed. If the Balladeer does raise himself from Ermansoul, many people in Azuma will be affected. I can't imagine what the situation would look like. Worst case scenario, it will affect everyone with a connection to the Raiden uh, Kokaiden. Kazuha, uh, Ayaka, Ayato. Well, will this mean they'll disappear? There's nothing we can do about it at this point. Hey, have you got any ideas on what we should do next? That's... Seems like now there's nothing left for us to do but to go to sleep. But Paimon's still so worried. Paimon won't be able to sleep a wink tonight. Me neither. So, how about, uh, we list all our favorite foods to take our mind off things? Heck, if that doesn't work, Paimon's probably going to collapse of anxiety here. Or hunger. All right, Paimon will start. First dish. Hmm. Munstack grilled fish. Oh, and chicken mushroom skewers. Tea break pancakes, cream stew, sauteed matsutake, and drayun chili chicken, almond tofu, satisfying salad. My mom's oh, mind oh, went somewhere else very quickly. This temptation, golden shrimp balls, triple layered consomme, lotus seed and bird egg soup, and... And... Wait, what just happened? Come on, what's wrong? Uh, what are we? What was Paimon supposed to be doing just now? Paimon was, um, talking? Huh. Paimon suddenly can't remember what she was talking about. What was it again? You were getting so worried about the situation with the Balladeer that you started listing foods. Hmm? The Balladeer? Oh. Is that a food too? Huh. Weird name though. Uh oh. Uh oh. My mom doesn't remember the balladeer. That must mean he actually pulled it off. But how did he have that ability? This doesn't make sense. What's wrong? Your eyes are like saucers. Was it something Paimon said? No, it's nothing. The Balladeer. Is that someone's name? Because it sounds like a nickname or something. Hmm. If this is really happening, I need to know what else has changed. Paimon, come with me. Hmm? Okay, sure. Where are we going? I want to go back to Inazuma. Okay, you're acting like this is an emergency. Now's not the time to explain. Let's get over there first. Wait. Was that the end of it? The Balladeer has caused a series of unexpected consequences within Ermansoul, and you're the only one aware of that. In order to ascertain the situation, ascertain the situation, you head off to Inazuma. Well, I guess we could actually save that till next time. Sorry for the sword slice. So, that'll be it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, when we try to figure out what the Balladeer has done exactly, deuces. So I wrote it in the rhyme, the Reverend Doctor got an 8K, wet working. The roaches get the rays spray, my weak rhyme, my body, your best verses on game day. I touch the crowns of self-entitled kings, you leave the heat like LeBron when I melt your idols, vital things. This is Malcolm and Martin, million man marching, Sparta mixed with a legion of angels, surrounding sons and daughters, Simon Peter with a desert eagle, waving it at Caesar. So if 